Well, good afternoon, students. Dr. Z here. Welcome back to an exciting DIY lesson. This was probably by far the most exciting lesson that I put together because you're actually stacking the logs. And that's what you want to do when you're building a log home is this step is probably what you envisioned on doing. So here it is in its entirety. And again, I've done all the research up front and put together a nice script so that we don't leave anything out. Uh, tools and equipment, hammer, square, circular saw, chainsaw, make sure the blade is sharpened in your chainsaw, tool belt with ample supplies, cordless screw gun, log screws, step ladder, blueprints, beam elevator, fulcrum, pulley, system, logs, hewn beams, sealant tape between the logs, caulking which is called log jam, and proper attire. Step one, planning the milestone. Oddly enough, uh, I call this the easiest portion of the entire build. Uh, the reason why it's the easiest portion is because um, all of these logs have been milled um, at a manufacturing site. Remember, I bought a kit from a company and they had already pre-stacked the logs to make sure everything fit properly and then shipped it out with a semi-truck. So the other part of this is that they send out not only certified architecture blueprints but you also have a schematic for the logs each log has a staple and a sticker on it and that correlates to a letter or number on your schematic so every log has been labeled and every log is is in the proper uh, position uh, from your schematic and when you're done you should have a 100 percent complete uh, log home build for logs at this point now that doesn't include your roof or your you know subfloors and things and, and upper floors and uh, ceiling uh, trusses and things like that but at least you've got all the walls up after this step so um, so warning if the logs stacked end to end does not measure up to the length of the subfloor I would call a professional to come out and aid in your build now I had this done exact thank goodness for that or thank God um, and it was essentially you don't want logs hanging over the subfloor by a couple of inches and then you don't want logs that don't quite go to the ends of the subfloor uh, and the reason for this is because your your rim plate of your uh, floor joists are two double stack two by tens and that that's what holds up your entire home you don't want to be building stacking these logs in between two floor joists where it's going to be supported just by an osb uh, sheet of uh, plywood because then it would come crashing through so just make sure you understand that and if you're not exactly lined up uh, you need to call a professional immediately now let's cover measurements real quick um, now in this step I had uh, three Amish brothers come out and help me. There was nothing wrong with me doing this myself. The only problem was is I had so much going on. Um, remember I work remotely uh, for the government and I do um, a lot of my work on computer systems and I had such tremendous project load at this time uh, for the government so then I had to use um, outside help and luckily these Amish brothers actually specialize in building log homes and they said that this was one of the easiest uh, projects that they did because all they had to do was look at the schematic and stack it. Uh, these guys are usually hewing logs, chopping down trees, uh, having an on-site sawmill um, and this was one of the easiest projects because they didn't have to do that. But just real quick on measuring, these guys were within 1 16th of an inch on everything. Now to me that was too fine of a detail. Um, I tried to get everything within an eighth of an inch uh, and in some instances I'm sure I'm a quarter inch off here and there uh, with the entire build but try to get as, it as exact as possible when you're doing your build because three inches off is unacceptable honestly you could have severe tragedy in your build if you, the logs didn't extend to the end of the subfloor and they were three inches closer because now that entire course is not stacked on the rim joists of the floor which is, supports the entire 
you know, 10 to 20 ton home, it's right in between the floor joists, which means there's no support. So just to let you know about that. Also, make sure your gun, cordless guns or are, are, uh, drill guns are charged up. Uh, you've got a uh, number of drill bits that you're probably going to go through. Uh, make sure you lay out your sealant tape. Um, and then, of course, um, there's a lot of screws that they have. They have 6-inch screws, 8-inch screws, 10-inch screws, 12-inch screws, and 20-inch log screws. And they are all labeled in the certified blueprints on how these go. So, step two, install the sheath. Uh, the first portion of the project plan is to cover the perimeter of your rim joists on the outside with metal flashing. This was just tin, by the way. Uh, this will help keep the water away from seeping in and rotting the base of your structure. Uh, the tin will butt to the styrofoam ICF blocks, as you can see from the video here. And then the top of the tin will fit a quarter inch inside the bottom groove of your first course of logs. Remember, the manufacturer had already cut that groove in there for you, and they already have recommended the tin to use. So all you got to do is follow your certified blueprints, and you should be good to go. Um, step three, stack the first layer of logs. Uh, so once the tin is placed around the circumference of the outside of your rim joist, you now stack uh, the first layer of logs and screw them into the subfloor rim joists. Uh, be sure that you are uh, inserting into the rim joist and not screwing through the OSB uh, subfloor because um, the, the log is actually six inches uh, wide on the surface area on top and bottom. However, it's called a double D log. So in the center, because they bevel out on both sides, it's actually eight inches wide. Okay, so be sure you glue down the first layer of logs with the adhesive that they give you. And then you're going to go ahead and uh, you know screw down your entire first layer of logs and right through the rim joists that you've installed and then what you want to do is ensure that you lock uh, the corners in uh, one side of the uh, corner is going to be a half of log thick the other side is a full log and because I have what they call a D saddle notch in the corners they extend over but but um, six inches on each corner I had to actually have a half of log on one side and a full log on the other and then the, and the other side of the house would be a full log and then you go back to the other corner it would be a half a log so uh, essentially it's a full log half log full log half log and that's the four sides of the home so tip uh, the first course is critical to get right uh, it is you know best to take a step back and look at the entire home as the logs are just laid out assemble them above before you glue and screw them and then when you know that you've got it exact go ahead and put the adhesive down and uh, go ahead and screw them in to the rim joist step four log accessories so we're going to look at our certified schematic again and um, we're going to go ahead and um, go ahead and pull out the bundles of waterproof tape um, again, there's two sides because you want it waterproof from the outside and also from the inside. So you're going to lay down a strip of tape on the inside of the log top and then a strip of tape on the outside of the log top. And then you're also going to go ahead and add, ad add adhesive on those grooves as well. So the log manufacturing company put two grooves in one side and one groove in the other side. So when the logs mesh together, the one groove goes inside the two grooves and then that makes it real tight and strong. Um, you're gonna, you will repeat this process with the tape and caulking all the way around your first course and, and go ahead and start stacking the logs up according to your schematic and then you're going to add screws and tighten them down and do each course at a time. Uh, step 5 log corners. Now some log home, homes have different corners. I just said that but uh, you could have anything between a square log a D log corner post handcrafted milled which was pretty cool by the way they're all different sized logs like you'd have a 12 inch one a 6 inch one it, it looked really nice a Swedish cope a button pass beaver tail was pretty cool uh, single double curl ends staggered and milled flat timbered to name a few 
again I have the D-Log saddle latch which you can see from the picture and that was the easiest I want to make a note of that um, because the logs will always butt to the outside and have exact leveling on both sides as they overhang so I thought that was the easiest step six more log courses so tip tip you want to lay out each course around the perimeter of the subfloor as you go up and ensure that it matches the schematic that you have in your hand according to the sticker and the staple on the log um, there are specific edges for outside and inside of each log remember that eventually you're going to be using stepladder to do the top few courses of, of your nine foot high walls um, so again you want to screw these screws in diagonally um, you know your 8 inch screws 16 inch screws 20 inch screws and, and in the butt joints and corners uh, the plan stipulated that screws will be placed about every three feet so please consult your long home certified blueprints to find out what is recommended this project will not take a day but many days and possibly a week depending on your skill set so the four of us guys which is the three Amish brothers and myself we did this entire project in four days and that included the loft floor and the beams inside um, and then you're also gonna have to purchase a good chainsaw students um, I did my research an 18 inch uh, blade was good though they sell the 30 inch ones but those are a thousand dollars and you only need those for cutting down trees and, and firewood uh, which I do have now because I do my own firewood um, I got a forest pass uh, from the US Forest Service and I can go into a forest and cut down trees that they mark but um, but it's it, it's good free firewood and um, but for the log home you're going to want a, a blade about 18 inches long which would be about $200 investment maybe 250 and then uh, eventually in your electrical uh, video coming up I'm going to demonstrate um, it's actually in video 27 I'm going to demonstrate how to use a small chainsaw which is just uh, specifically made for electrical boxes in log homes so keep that tip in mind on that so all right so once you get up to the top course you've got um, all of your logs in play and your posts and then um, all of your tape is in place you got caulking done um, take a step back uh, take some pictures um, fire up the grill hopefully you brought some fresh vegetables make a salad to go with your steak and uh, sprinkle that salad with some blue cheese dressing sliced cucumbers celery tomatoes chopped lettuce and have the fixings of a fresh made salad sitting before you tonight it's a job well done and now you've got something to show all of your friends and neighbors back home and your wife of course and we'll see you in the next video be sure to click thumbs up below and like this video and subscribe to the channel and then if you can just drop us a five dollar donation students uh, it's tax deductible at www.university1310.org and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in the next video professor z signing out godspeed